In this tutorial we will check out the new finite dome option for the upcoming V-Ray 6. We will compare it to previous workflows, explore all relevant settings and finally build our own scene from scratch. So if you followed my channel for a while you will know that I always had a bit of an issue about how the V-Ray dome light was implemented, especially if you compare it to other renderers such as Corona. That's why I'm personally very happy to report that all of those issues that I had before with the dome light seem to have been addressed in V-Ray 6 and we're gonna use the V-Ray 6 beta for that. So you can join the open beta at the moment and that's why I have access to this release here already even though V-Ray 6 is not officially released yet. But we're gonna check out like what those changes are in the dome light and how we can use them to address all of these issues that I reported earlier with the dome light. So what we have here is a very simple scene. I just have this car model and now I just added this dome light in here. What I want to do now is that I use an HDRI in order to illuminate this car and also place it into this spherical HDRI environment. Therefore, let's just start a rendering and see what we get. So at the moment, we just have this dome light in here with this pure white color and we want to use this HDRI in here. So let me just instance this one here into the map channel and then we load our HDRI into this dome light and also use it in order to illuminate here our car. So now let's see what happens if we move around in our scene here a little bit. Let's rotate around first and then we can see the car itself is not really placed here on the ground. It's like floating in our environment basically. And the second issue is that if I zoom in and out, our environment itself is not changing at all. You can see the house here stays always exactly the same kind of size and only the car seems to be scaling smaller and bigger. So the reason for that is that our dome light here is infinitely large. That means the only thing that actually has a scaling in our scene is the car here and everything else is infinitely far away. And that's why if you zoom in and out, only the car seems to be changing here in size and the environment does not. So we can try to address certain things about this by using the ground projection here in the V-Ray bitmap. Once you enable this, you can see that now if you're rotating around here, the car seems to be placed here on a ground plane, but not all the issues are fixed. So you can see if you zoom in and out, if you see here the upper part of our environment, this one is still infinitely far away. And you get this kind of really weird transitions here going on. And all in all, this is not really an approach that seems to be useful for us. So now luckily there is an option to turn this infinite dome light here into a finite dome. That means it has a scaling here in our scene and this will help us address all of those issues that I previously had here with the dome light. So let me now show you how to use this new V-Ray finite dome. So what we first need to do is to disable here this ground projection that we enabled earlier because this one is useful for the old workflow. But now with this new workflow, we don't use this ground projection here, but we go into the dome light itself and then just turn this one into a finite dome in here. You can immediately see a drastic difference. And the reason for that is that now here our dome has a size and scaling in our scene and it also has a position in our scene. You can see I can move it around here and it sticks to wherever I place here this gizmo and the size of this dome light I can define here with these radius parameters. But let's first place it here at the zero and zero position here in our scene. So it's just placed below our car. And then with the radius here, let's try to increase that, for example, to a radius of 250. You can see now the dome already starts to become bigger, but let's choose a higher size, maybe something like 500 or even something like 1000. So now once I zoom out, you will see that the dome light here is completely surrounding our car and split up into two different parts. We have here our ground plane, which at the moment doesn't really look very realistic yet because there are some distortions, but we will fix this in a second. And then we have this upper part of the dome, which also has a scaling in our scene. And the result is now that if I'm inside in here and I will move in and out, you can see that the environment is also reacting to my camera movements. Like this way, it just looks way more realistic. Now let's move out again. And let's first try to address here the issues with the floor. 
So now let's select back the light and we can see that there are two additional parameters in here. One is called projection height and one is called ground blend. So for projection height, we need to set that to whatever height the HDI was captured in. And I think in this case, the HDI maybe was captured as a height of 100 centimeters, so roughly one meter. And you can kind of eyeball this until you kind of feel it looks correct. So I think maybe 125 or 100 centimeters, something like this. And the ground plan basically helps us here blending the lower part of the dome to the upper part of the dome. So if I put this to zero, you can see that we have this very sharp corner here at the edge. And if I put it to higher values, you can see we have this much more smooth transition here going on until we reach this maximum value of one where we have a perfect sphere here. So you can choose whatever you feel kind of works here good with this HDRI. I think the default value in this case here of 0.2 seems to be working quite good here in our case. So now we're almost finished. The only thing that's missing is that our car here doesn't really have a shadow. Let me zoom in a little bit and let me just add a new plane in here. So let's just add a plane and then also position this here in the zero zero position. And now we only need to make this plane here a shadow catcher. For this, we can just easily use this handy button up here in the V-Ray toolbar. So once I enable this, you can see that now this plane here has been transformed into a shadow catcher. And now if I zoom in, you can see that we have now here a nice shadow that's turning up here. And now we would be basically finished. So we have here our car implemented into the environment. We can choose all kind of different camera angles in here. We don't have any kind of weird distortions and so on. And it seems to be working really quite well overall. So I'm really quite happy about how this new V-Ray Finite Dome has been implemented. And I think it's really a great new addition to V-Ray 6. So when selecting the light and using the scaling modifier, you can scale up or down your light as well. And then also you can use non-uniform scaling. So you can make your light, for example, taller, or you can make it more narrow in one direction and so on. So I think there's really a lot of ways to customize your light now. Also, if we go to the option of the DOM light, we can choose here different kind of options in here. For example, we can choose to affect the alpha channel. So at the moment, the DOM light is affecting the alpha channel. If I switch this here off, then basically only the car would be visible in my alpha channel. So that's quite handy. And also we can lock here our texture to the icon. That means I can just rotate, for example, the dome around how I want in all kinds of different directions. And I can also move and place it in my scene wherever I want to. So that's all for the final dome for the upcoming V-Ray 6. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to this channel because there will be many more videos released where I check out other new features in V-Ray 6. So until then, take care and see you soon.